Behind the voices of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, now who hasn't watched this movie yet? Being one of the most successful Spider-Man movies in the franchise and being one of the best animated movies, I mean winning the Oscars for Best Animated Feature Film, the Golden Globes for Best Animated Motion Picture, and the BAFTA for Best Animated Feature Film, do not lie. Anyways, with the popularity of the movie, it is also with the support of the amazing cast who cast it in the movie. With Haley Steinfeld, Nick Cage, and yes, John Mulaney, the stand-up comedian casted in the movie, the movie is nothing short of amazing. In this video, we're talking about the voices behind Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Before the video starts, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment down below, like the video and we will randomly give a shout out to one of you at the end of the video. And with that, let's continue on to behind the voice of Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Number 6, Shamik Moore. I mean, we cannot start the list without the main character in it, right? Shamik Moore, with this movie being his most notable role, is the main character of it. AKA Miles Morales, a teenager who's bitten by a mutated spider and became Spider-Man in New York City. Being the main role of the Marvel movie, he was very excited when this opportunity came up. And surprisingly, he has no fear of being one of the most iconic roles of the franchise. He's just sure his performance is as believable as possible. Just talks like how his younger self would talk instead of trying to put on a voice. He felt like he found Miles after these two years. The producers saw it at Sundance in America and it was... They so you're like new here, right? We got <laughs> Number 5, Jake Johnson. Okay, let's talk about the other spider. Jake Johnson being Peter B. Parker, the Peter Parker from another multiverse. By the way, we will be talking about the other Peter Parker in the next point, which is a unique twist on the character. Being Miles' reluctant mentor, Peter is a jaded 38-year-old from another dimension. He is portrayed as an amalgamation of how incompetent a Spider-Man could be. Jake took this role because based on the unique summary of his character, he is very intrigued by how he could play such an interesting character, a failed Spider-Man per se. When Phil Lord and Chris Miller, the producers of the Spider-Man movie, contacted Johnson on whether he would be interested in the role, he said 100%, as knowing that the character he is playing is Spider-Man, but around his age, is just interesting. He is excited to get the role. Um... Hmm. Which has to happen soon, I'd cool, imagine. Unique yeah. style what of animation, being able to do it together. Mm -hmm. Because I did realize that like you, there's a different level of performance and connection you get when you get to work together, performance, and vice versa. And so... Number four, Chris Pine. Okay, now as promised, we are talking about the other Spider-Man, Peter Parker. This might be a little confusing, basically. Now we are talking about Peter Parker, not Peter B. Parker, the Peter Parker from the other multiverse, but rather Peter Parker. The same Peter Parker in the game multiverse as Miles is. Got it? Still confused? Just watch the movie and you'll get it. Anyways, Chris Pine voicing Peter Parker, the younger version of Peter Parker who was seen at the first start of the movie, spoiler alert by the way, killed by Kingpin after the activation of a collider. This version of Peter Parker is intended to be a as competent as a Spider-Man as possible, aka polar opposite of Peter B. Parker. Being how high profile Chris Pine is, it is very, very surprising how Sony could keep this secret from the public eye. People only realized that Chris was in the movie when early screeners accidentally saw the name Chris Pine in the end credits of the movie. When people initially thought that Jake Johnson would voice both Spider-Men, in an interview with Phil Lord by Fandango, he was asked why he chose to have two separate roles. Phil replied with the fact that he wants this version of Spider-Man to be as competent as possible while the other Spider-Man isn't. It is just a little way to say that these are different characters from another parallel and dimension. made out quite a few. I, we definitely all like went onto the internet looking for 30s glossaries <laughs> and that sort of thing. And then it became a thing of like sort of mixing in 30s sounding bits yeah. that we all we all participated in. We also were pretty punchy, I, I want to yes. say, because it was 2 a.m. on the mix. Margins <laughs> right before Rodney was going in to, <laughs> to record with him the first time. And we're like, ah. Oh. Number three, <laughs> Haley Steinfeld. Okay, now, let's talk about the other Spider-Man, shall we? Haley Steinfeld, best known for her singing career, also lent her voice in this movie, being Gwen Stacy, aka the female Spider-Man from another multiverse. Knowing that she has a very big role on her hands, she is very excited about getting that role. In an interview with Entertainment Tonight, she told the news outlet that being a part of the movie is quite a privilege, and she is honored to be a part of it. 
Being that Gwen is such a strong, free-spirited, and badass female superhero, she felt that it is just her own person, and she is kind of above it all. She is also going to be honored to work again with the same people. Style that is all her own and that extends to her costume. Spider Gwen wears teal ballet shoes with a white, black, and hot pink spider pad hood and mask to hide her identity. And, of course, to fight crime in style. Number two, John Mulaney. Okay, knowing that this is John Mulaney we're talking about, he could make his casting process into a wild ride. John Mulaney, playing Peter Porker, aka Spider Ham, is a Spider Man from another multiverse that is also an anthropomorphic pig. Yeah, if you haven't watched the movie, you will be scratching your head right now. But believe me, his backstory is even wilder. Porker here was once a spider, but was bitten by a radioactive pig. Yeah, again, watch the movie. As said in the start, the way John Mulaney was casted was a wild ride in itself. He got a call from an unnamed company and an unnamed person. They told Mulaney that they can't send the script or even anything related to the movie. He added that because this is a high profile job, it is not uncommon to be in this situation. But he added the funny remark that this is also how many kidnappings begin. But he just went on stating that he was available. So continued on. When he got into the recording studio, he was asked whether he knew what was about to happen. And without context, that is a very creepy remark. And seems that he is really getting himself kidnapped. Of course, that didn't happen and he is now one of the best animated movies of all time. Fun fact, because they didn't give him any directions about the movie, John was basically told that he is playing a spider pig and need to make up lines about the voice. He made a bountiful lines that are kind of not safe for work, with swear words flying left and right. After the recording session, Mulaney asked whether the movie was rated R. He was told that it actually was PG. Good news, the recordings were sent to Jimmy Fallon, and you can gloriously hear them and the show pig-based newspaper. And he also has spider powers. So he's no different than you and me. Except that he's a pig. One of the spider heroes lives in the world of those old black and white films where everyone looks upset. And another is from a high-tech future, and she has his. There's also the world's most handsome spider-powered pig hero in film history. I s And finally, number one, Nicolas Cage. At this point, are you ever surprised that Nick Cage is in a movie? It's like he's in every single movie released recently. Playing as classic Spider-Man Noir, he felt like Noir was such a unique character as he is like a collage of memories that he tries to bring more color and flavor into. So the character would be perceived to be more fluid in essence how they would talk in the 30s. In very dark tones. Uh, and I think that separates him. For me, Spider-Verse is a great movie for families because it's about positive qualities. In my universe, it's 1933, and I'm a private eye. You would hear alone was amazing. Spider-Man Noir, he's probably the edgiest of the Spider-Men. Think Raymond Chandler, think Paul Kane. It was great old character. He was funny. If you made adjustments in his performance, he would make them and do it way better than you even thought. I'm talking hard boys, real biscuit boxers. Heard that after his first recording session, he did a few lines. The director kept making notes, and then Nicholas just turned and he was like, Oh, you want me to go full cage? You're just bumping gums, you hard boiled turtle slapper. He brought the cage. Can you close off your feelings so you don't get crippled by the moral ambiguity of your violent action? Probably a fan of the old bogey movie and Cagney movies, because that's all part of that dimension. At least that's how I like to portray the character. I like to drink ang- That is all for the video. Thank you so much for watching until the end. Subscribe to the channel and leave a comment down below. Like the video and we will randomly sh give a shout out to one of you at the end of the video. For today's shout out, we're going to shout out this comment. Thank you so much for being a supporter. So with that, see you all in the next video.